18-year-old Mason Andrews set out to accomplish something truly amazing, become the youngest person to fly around the world in a single-engine airplane. And he did it for a cause that he cares deeply about, MedCamps of Louisiana. It's a special needs summer camp that's completely free of charge to the families who use it. So during the course of the trip, we were able to raise over $33,000, and even more money has rolled in since I got back from the trip, inspired by the trip. So it's, it's something that I'm really proud of uh, being able to do. Mason flew a Piper Lance owned by his family. The aircraft's named the Spirit of Louisiana, which is uh, uh, sort of a call back to Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis, but also a tribute to my state of Louisiana. The journey took 76 days, and Mason encountered several challenges along the way. On one leg, Mason was surprised by a military jet near Taiwan. I had entered the Taiwan flight information region and was still very near the storm cell that I was skirting towards the, uh, the west side when I uh, saw an F-16 in about a uh, 80 degree bank angle, about a mile in front of me. And then a few minutes later, it came up off my left wing, about five feet wing to wing. And um, it was a, a Taiwanese F-16 that had intercepted me and wanted me to fly back into Japanese airspace. So it stayed with me as I skirted around the storm and ultimately was able to re-enter Naha control and uh, start relaying with them again. And they, they began to understand my situation. And that wasn't the only challenge that Mason faced on the trip. On his leg to the Philippines, he encountered an unexpected line of thunderstorms that closed most of the airports around his destination. So I called Manila Center and I said, Lance 78 Charlie requesting uh, diversion to uh, Subic Bay International Airport. And they came back and they said, Subic Bay is closed. I called back and I said, 78 Charlie uh, declared an emergency we landed in Subic Bay. So they came back and they said, the lights aren't on, there's no one at the airport. You know, there's no way to land. I said, we're proceeding to Subic Bay. I said, and I, you know, I, I wasn't uh, demanding, but at the same time, I, I needed their help. So I asked them to get somebody out to the airport to turn the lights on. And I was, I was within a mile at 200 feet when the lights came on. The experience taught Mason valuable lessons that he now shares with other pilots. If you have an emergency, do what you need to do to get the airplane on the ground safely. Don't worry about what air traffic control wants you to do. Obviously, air traffic control is usually looking out for your best interest. But if you have to deviate from any of the rules, you know, in the in the FARs, as as 91.3 says, um, you know, deviate from them as much as you need to enhance the safety of your flight. Mason told us that he hopes his journey will help grow the aviation community. The more people learn about these types of things, the more people get inspired to do them, just like I was. That, that's really all we can hope for is the next generation of people coming up and learning to fly and uh, becoming airline pilots or military pilots. I mean, we, we need all of them right now. This is David Tulis, AOPA Live.